It's the study of motion. So, um, and that's really what we're trying to do is look at motion with the body. And, and so part of the hallmark of this work, you know, precision kinematics, is also thinking of the body in a skeletal perspective instead of thinking in a muscular perspective. It seems that because the precision neuromuscular therapy is highly specific work, and that's what we're teaching, that's what we're training people in, what people have commented on and what they've been most uh, influenced by is the, what we think of as the transition between one movement to the other, something that I think neither one of us thought much about, but this whole process is looking at just that specific piece and making that a discipline in and of itself. And I think the other component of this, which I think is important, is that in order to do this, for us, we have to have this lightness of hands. The energy is probably the learning to listen and, and the paying attention part, but not a physically demanding sort of thing. And I mean, in some ways, how wonderful is that? I also find that to be able to combine this with, you know, when I'm doing you know, more muscle specific work that takes a certain amount of energy and so it's delightful for me. I feel like what it provides for the this kinematics, what it provides for the person, which is a lightness, also provides a lightness for me. How great is that? Yeah, I know. I mean, how fun is that? It's a very pleasant experience and then gives us feedback as to whether or not the work that we're doing is actually making a difference, which is a wonderful process. And that brings us to a concept called dynamic palpation versus static palpation. So in dynamic palpation, you're really looking at how a muscle responds to movement rather than just statically palpating something. What kind of things are going on in the central nervous system when the joint is moving around? Yeah, I think that's fascinating because if you think about general massage where someone is just, um, let's say, in effleurage or petrosage where you're working, um, you're actually mostly affecting the skin receptors, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing, and you're feeding wonderful sensory information back to the nervous system. But those are the skin receptors. When we're actually picking up a limb or moving an arm, uh, moving a leg, you're actually also affecting the joint receptors. And that is giving this wonderful sensory information about the joint back to the nervous system, which it didn't have previously. And also just moving the joint is then washing the joint in synovial fluid, things that non-movement approaches really can't do. In our movement work, we're actually having a conversation with the nervous system. And so I see this work as that conversation in the nervous system. And I think the process by that means that I'm not trying to force something on you that you don't want to do. So the work then becomes, it looks, I, I would think, almost playful. We should talk about the uh, element of pain-free. Is it, are we, where are we operating in terms of? Yeah, yeah, I think that's important. I know there's some really good evidence that, for instance, with low back pain, there's this word called kinesiophobia, which means fear of motion. People are afraid to move because they think, if I move, it's going to hurt. And, and we'll see those people in our office and they'll say, I can't do anything with my low back. I'm, you know, it's, it's all locked up. And then they're on the table, and if we actually do some light movement with their back, what they find out is, oh, well actually I can move in maybe this plane and maybe that plane. In our work, in the kinematic work, what we're trying to do is play inside that realm of comfort so that the person feels like they can do, they can do this and it's not painful, it's non-threatening. It actually should feel wonderful, not pushing the boundaries. Again, that can't be imposed by somebody else. It is the nervous system learning how to let go and do that. And, and again, I think when that nervous system learns, then I think that is then integrated into daily life.